for at IG Markets in Melbourne. Chris, thanks for joining us today. Your take on that News Corp result, did you like the numbers? Yeah I, yeah, I did, Kate. Um, I think the market liked it as well. I think the stock was up about 3% post-market. So yeah, there's a good chance we're going to see the stock open a little bit higher in, in our time zone. Uh, you know, the stock's up 30% year-to-date. What we've seen from the result is, again, time and time again, this company shows you that the earnings from this company are not cyclical like some of the other media names. They're structural in nature. I mean, if look at the advertising revenue that these guys pulled in. Domestically, up 8% on an international basis, up, what, 25% in their cable. So they're getting the advertising dollars through, obviously being helped by the election as you I think you pointed out earlier there uh, but I think if you look in the operating income uh, you know that the, the cable network division is the one you want to look at that makes up about two-thirds of their uh, their operating income yeah that was sensational up 23 percent the film side of things was about 15 percent above the consensus there revenue numbers probably a touch shy uh, of what the market was looking for uh, but on the EPS line absolutely uh, absolutely destroyed um, consensus there it's uh, uh, you know, 43 cents to 37 cents, that's a, a massive beat. And this company uh, has a, a massive history of, of outperforming. I mean, I think six, uh, probably six out of the previous eight before this one, it beat on the EPS line. So this has a, a good pedigree when it comes to earnings season. Uh, so it smashed on the EPS, perhaps a touch light on the revenue side. Um, and clearly, I think, you know, they, they've reiterated their guidance for, uh, for low uh, single digit, um, or oh, sorry, high single digit, low double digit growth going forward. And I think the market had been expecting that. So I'd expect to see this stock um, opening a little bit higher. But of course, we've got the conference call coming out soon. Uh, and the market will be very, very, he very pleased or keen to hear some of the comments that they've got potentially about a future buyback. Uh, and some of the other capital management initiatives, of course, about the splitting of the company as well. So it should, it should be a good gain on open here. Yeah, absolutely. As you said, Chris, those stocks up about 3% in after hours trade. I want to ask you about the US election. That's where our focus is today. Now, lots of debate this morning with our various guests about whether a Romney or an Obama win is more beneficiary for the market. So, uh, what do you think? Do you think that Romney with his more favourable tax policies and his ability to cut the red tape or Obama with his uh, QE3 rollout is more likely to, to be a winner? Look, I, th I think from a very simplistic point of view, I think the market will rally if we get a win. <laughs> that, that, that's what we saw last night. The market has an anticipation that we are going to see a president election, elected. If we don't, if we, if we don't see either president get the 270 electoral votes to get a, a clear winner, then uh, you know, then it becomes even more complicated, and, and and the uncertainty that that creates will probably see the market have a risk-off event. So, very very short term, if we're looking in the next you know 24 hours, 48 hours for the markets, I think we need to see an actual clear winner. I think that, I don't think the market will initially care who it is as long as we do get a winner. Longer term, that's when you start seeing some of the issues, and they've both got pros and they've both got cons. You know, Romney would be good because of the tax cut side of things, but of course, uh, you know, you might see the U.S. dollar strengthen because of his king dollar policy. Uh, the market's anticipation that would perhaps not be the forward guidance from the Fed is not going to be extended for as long as possible. Remember, he can't, he doesn't have the power to kick Bernanke out. He probably just means that Bernanke won't get another term if he was to, to choose in, in January 2014. So he can't actually alter monetary policy to that degree, but perhaps the market will get the anticipation that you know, the forward projections for the Fed, that, that low Fed funds rate for longer, may, uh, may be affected by that. So you might see the dollar strengthen, but the market might like his tax cut policies. On the other hand, you know, Obama's got this big situation where he's going to um, you know, uh, increase um, duty or capital gains tax, for example. Uh, which the stock market clearly won't like, but they'll like his easy money policy that he's, he's um, you know, stamped on Bernanke. So I think in the short term, uh, if we get a clear winner, which we'll probably hear more about uh, towards the back end of the day, about 4 o'clock, I think the, uh, the Iowa polls close. Um, you know, the, throughout the day, I think starting from about 11 o'clock, we get the, the, the key battleground states coming through. Virginia's the first off the rank with six other states there, but then, then we go to Ohio, that comes out about 11.30. Uh, so that's what we're going to be keeping our eye on. I mean, I just think we'd want a clear winner, and then I think the market can choose whether they want to uh, see a situation. But I think if you look at the market last night, from, a, from the early parts of the session, we did see a really big spike up in the Dow and the S&P. And I think there was an article from the Washington Post that suggested that uh, Romney, Romney was doing very well in Iowa. Well, obviously, Republicans have never won without taking Iowa, um, a higher, sorry. Uh, and I think, you know, th that shows to me that the market perhaps would like a Romney win there. Interesting. There's no clear favourite, it sounds like, from the market's perspective. Chris, opening calls for the market today. We saw a nice run up in commodities overnight on the back of that lower dollar. What are you looking for at 10am? 
Yeah, we didn't say that the, the dollar wasn't actually uh, amazingly lower. I mean, the dollar index was only down about 0.2 of a percent, but you're right. I mean, we did see some good gains. Gold was off to the race out. It's one of its best days in quite some time, up about $30 from where we closed yesterday. So that needs to be priced into stocks. Yeah, Newcrest, obviously, and some of the other gold names should do quite well on the back of that. Uh, WTI has a, had a, a, a stellar gain up about 3.3 percent from where we closed yesterday. Of course, that needs to be priced into our, into our market as well. So, you know, WP, uh, uh, you know, Woodside Petroleum, names like that should do quite well. If you look at the S&P, the uh, energy sector was the best performing by quite some way. So that should hopefully be reiterated in our market. You know, CBA is coming up a trading update. I, haven't, I didn't see what the consensus was in the market, but it looks okay. Net interest margins are going to be flat around that 2.06 level. Um, and of course, News Corp might, might do reasonably well as well today. BHP should be up about 14 cents or so based off its ADR. And we're looking for the broader market just to unwind, just above 4,500. And of course, um, you know, if we start getting a clear sign throughout the, the, you know, the latter part of the day um, that we're going to have an actual winner for this, then I think the US futures could make a bit of a move up, despite, you know, depending on, regardless if it's a Democrat or Republican win there. Yeah, I mean, that was an impressive $30 run up for gold. Do you think that? That suggests uh, an Obama win maybe is more likely on the card. Is that what, but what's behind the trade? Well, I think gold would love a, a, an Obama win, to be honest. As, as, as you've mentioned a, num a number of times, you know, it feeds into the market's perception that the, the Fed will have more ammunition uh, and not be lent on from a government perspective to continue with this easy money policy rather than uh, sort of a, a, a tightening bias that perhaps the, the Republicans could run with. So in that environment, you know, gold would do very well uh, and continue with this, this side of things. Because remember in December, that's when Operation Twist comes to a head uh, and there's a you know, consensus in the market is that uh, the Fed will come out and, and, and come out with a new policy to, 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 to alter that and actually there'll be another 45 billion of US Treasuries being added to the current mortgage-backed security program. So I think, yeah, gold probably a little bit oversold in the short term and I think we just saw a bit of a snapback rally last night. So yeah, I think we do get a clear sense that the Obama's going to win, which of course the bookies are running with at the moment, then gold uh, should see some modest upside on the back of that. Yeah, I think betting markets have something like a 70% likelihood of an Obama win at the moment. Chris Weston from yeah. IG Markets, thanks for joining us. Okay, the Commonwealth Bank has